Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Piyush and in this particular video, we will be discussing the solution of challenge two of 10 weeks of cloud ops. If you haven't heard this term before, feel free to check out this video over here, link in the description section and over here as well somewhere. So make sure you understand that and it has all the details, how you can participate in that challenge and what are we doing as part of it. For those of you who are already participating in the challenge and facing some difficulties, I'm creating this video so that you could get some understanding of how to complete the challenge, what resources to use and how to basically complete it step by step. So the challenge two of 10 weeks of cloud ops was this. In this challenge, we had to create a highly available, highly scalable and fault tolerant three tier architecture in the cloud provider of your choice either AWS or Azure or GCP. And we need to also keep in mind the security and all the best practices. With that being said, let's start the video. So this is the AWS workshop that we will be following along this uh, video. I will provide the link of this workshop as well as the link of GitHub repository in the description section below. So do not worry about it. So if we go over here to the introduction section over here, and you will see a nice architectural diagram. So let's quickly have a look at that, what it is all about. So if you see over here, uh, we have a VPC created within uh, AWS, right? Uh, this VPC have two availability zones, AZ1 and AZ2. And this is uh, currently in only one region. To make it even highly available, you can do it in multiple regions, right? And uh, it has an internet gateway attached. So you can attach one internet gateway to a VPC and inside that you have multiple subnets. So you have two public subnets and then four private subnets. Details about like uh, what is VPC? Why do we create it? Why do we create subnet? And all those things are uh, already present in a video for that. I have already created a video. So make sure you watch that video before. If you don't uh, know the concepts of networking in AWS or any cloud provider. So I will paste the link in the description section and going further. If you see there is an external elastic load balancer over here and it is redirecting the request from the internet to the backend servers and the backend here are the Amazon EC2 servers, right? Um, the reason why we are using a load balancer so that we can distribute the traffic among multiple EC2 servers as the backend. And these EC2 servers are part of the auto scaling group. If there is one EC2 server that is crashed, uh, it will spin up a new EC2 server and replace the previous one. And this ensures high availability and fault tolerance. Then we have an internal load balancer. This is internal load balancer that will redirect the request from these EC2 servers to the app servers that are placed in the private subnet. Like the difference between the public and private subnet is uh, basically public subnet has access to internet while private subnet does not. Then all the requests from uh, these EC2 server will be redirected to the Amazon RDS database over here. We are using Aurora and it has a primary and secondary database. So this is read replica. Read replica can be promoted to primary database in case this is failed. So if there is a failure in this, it will be replaced by uh, the read replica. Read replica becomes the primary database. So we have used high availability and fault tolerance at all the levels of this architecture. Uh, let's have a look at each of these components now. All right, so we will be following these steps over here given in the workshop. Uh, you can follow along with me and pause the video whenever you want or you can just watch the video till then and understand the concept. So whichever way is uh, preferred by you. So the path zero is the setup. The first step is to download code from GitHub. So we'll be basically cloning this GitHub repository, which has application code as well as some configuration files. So I'll copy this and open this in my git bash. I will make a new directory over here and cd into that. Now I will be running this command that I have copied. It is cloning the repository because it is public repository. You don't have to provide any credentials for it. 
So let's clear the screen and see if it's been downloaded. So yes, we have this folder AWS uh, tier three web architecture workshop. So I'm just gonna get inside that folder. See what do we have? So we have some application code and readme file license file, all the other uh, metadata, right? In application code, we have one folder for app tier, one for web tier, and then nginx config. Now let's go back to our workshop. All right, so we have completed this now S3 bucket creation. We have to create a bucket and we will be using this bucket later in the course. So let's uh, go ahead, give it a unique name, leave all the defaults in and make sure the region that you are intended to run the whole lab in. Make sure you use uh, one single region, whatever you select. And in this bucket, we will be uploading our code so that it will be deployed into the server. Right. So let's just uh, give it a name and uh, create the bucket. So I'll go back to my AWS Cloud Console, go to S3, and then hit over here, create bucket. Now give it a name Demo Web App, choose 101 because it has to be unique. Right. And I'm selecting the region as US East 1. So I'll be using the same region throughout this uh, demo. I'll leave all the settings as default as per the workshop. And I'll hit over here, which says create bucket. Now the bucket is created as a bucket. Now let's go back to the workshop. So this step is also completed. Now hit next. Now it says navigate to IAM dashboard and create an EC2 role. So let's go back again, search for IAM. Here it is. And then it says go to roles, create a role, and select EC2 as trusted identity. So we will be using trusted identity type as AWS service and use case as EC2. So let's go to roles and then create a role. And so this is the default AWS service. And in the use case, we select EC2. Hit next. And now let's see what permissions do we need. So we need AWS SSM managed instance code as well as S3 read only access. So just, yeah, just these two permissions. So I'll just copy this one. And I'll search over here, filter by policy. Hit enter, here it is. I'll select this one and then clear the filter and search for S3 read only. Here is the S3 read only policy. And then clear the filter again. Those two would have been selected, I believe. Let's hit next. And yeah, you see over here, these two permissions are already added. Now I have to give it a name demo. EC2 role, right? And then keep everything as default and hit create role. All right, so it says now a role is created. Let me just quickly see demo. Okay, here it is. So now the role is also created. So this is done. So part two, the initial setup is done. Now the bigger part, which is networking and security again, all these components, VPC, subnets, internet connectivity, routing, security groups, everything I have already explained in another video related to AWS networking. So feel free to watch that. I have created similar videos for Azure and GCP as well. I'll put all the links in the description. So the first one is, let's see, we are creating an isolated network with the following components, VPC, subnet, route table, internet gateway, NAT gateways and security group. You can hit next or you can hit from here as well. So the first is VPC. We have to create a custom VPC. So let me go down over here. Let's go to VPC over here. And now I'll be moving this workshop uh, in a separate window so that it, it is not distracting for you and you can just easily follow along. Need to hit create VPC over here. Now make sure you select VPC only. And you can give it a name like um, AWS demo workshop, right? And then it says IPv4 CIDR manual input. 
So you can uh, provide your CIDR range for VPC. So this is the CIDR range that I'm gonna use, slash 16. So next is, uh, I'm not using any IPv6 CIDR, so that is okay. And this CIDR calculation as well, I've explained in a separate video. So make sure you watch that as well, if you don't know about it. Now, if you scroll down, you have a name selected and hit create VPC. Now this VPC will be created without any subnet. Now the next part is to create the subnets. So click over here, subnets, and then create subnet. Now select the VPC in which you want to create these subnets. So this is the custom VPC that we just created. So select this one. Now we will be creating six subnets across two availability zones. So if you see over here, we have used uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six subnets, and it is spread across uh, two availability zones. So that is what we are gonna do now. Two public subnets and four private subnets. So you can give it a name which is um, easily understandable like uh, public web AZ subnet one, something like this. Uh, for AZ1 availability zone, you give it a preference like we are in US East 1, right? So US East 1A, select this one. Then you give it a CIDR block. Let me select this one, dash 24. So there are multiple online applications available which you can use to calculate the subnet. If you want to manually calculate it, then watch this video over here and uh, it will give you the idea how to do that. Now add a new subnet because we have to create six subnet, right? So let's give uh, this a name, public web subnet AZ2 because we will be creating this in the other zone, which is US East 1B. And the subnet range, make sure this is not overlapping with what we have created. So I'll be using 10.0.1.0 slash 24. Earlier it was 10.0.0.0 slash 24. So that's good. Now create a new subnet. And this time we're gonna call it private subnet AZ1. And then again, preference will be US East 1A. And another subnet range 2.0 slash 24. Now create one more. And this will be on the other availability zone, which is 1B and the range will be the next one, which is 10.0.3.0 slash 24. Now we'll be creating two more for databases. So let's call it private DB subnet AZ1. Copy this for US East 1. And it would be 10.0.4. 4.0 slash 24 and the last one is on az2 preference is az2 and then this one would be 0.0.5.0 0 .0 slash 24 and that's it so hit create subnet and give yourself a pat on the back because you have done an amazing job till now and these six subnet will be created. So if you can go to your VPC now and go to this VPC that we have created, there is this diagram that gets created for you that shows you the resource map. So it, this has one VPC, which is over here, and it is it has six subnets, three in uh, US East 1. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So three in US East 1, and then in US East 1B, right? So it has one public web subnet and two private subnet, one for application tier and one for database tier, same for the other one. And they all have one route table connected to it. So we will now move on and see what our route table, how do we associate it with the subnets. But before that, we will be creating an internet gateway. So to create an internet gateway, again, you can go to VPC section over here and here it is, internet gateway, you click on that. And there is a default internet gateway created for you. So you're gonna create a new one by clicking over here. 
create internet gateway and give it a name say three tier demo internet gateway and hit create internet gateway that's it now you have to attach this internet gateway to your vpc currently it's in detached mode so hit over here actions and attach to vpc because your default internet gateway is already attached to a default vpc that is why that one is not present over here in the drop down there is only one to one mapping so you select this and then you can hit attach internet gateway now this part is also done now we will be creating NAT gateway. We need to have the NAT gateway so that our instance in the private subnet would have access to the internet through a secured gateway channel and it will not go over the public internet through the internet gateway and um, that is why we are creating it. So again there is this NAT gateway over here. Click on that and then hit create NAT gateway. Now give it a name. I'm gonna give it NAT Gateway AZ1 because you need to create one NAT Gateway in one availability zone. So we have two. So we'll be creating two NAT Gateways. Now select the subnet over here. This subnet should be the public subnet in AZ1. So which is, there it is, public web subnet AZ1, this one. I'll select this. And connectivity type is public and allocate elastic IP to it. All right, so that we have allocated and then hit create NAT gateway. Now repeat the step for another NAT gateway that you want to create in um, the second availability zone. So again, I'll go back to NAT gateways, hit on create NAT gateway, give it the similar name like NAT gateway AZ2. Select the subnet of the public web subnet of AZ2, this one. Keep it public, allocate elastic IP to it and hit create NAT gateway. Now this part is also done. Now the next part is routing configuration. Now we have to create the route table and attach to the subnets. So again on the left side there is route tables. Hit over there and hit create route table. Now give it a name. Public route table. Copy it, select the VPC and that's it. Create route table. Now, once you create it, you will see this detail page. Now go to routes and on the right, edit routes. Currently you see it has one route, which is locally. That means instances in this sub VPC can talk to each other via their private IP. But now we will be making it accessible to the outside internet as well. So hit over here, edit route and click over here, add route. We'll add one more route with the destination as 0.0.0 slash .0, 0, which is every IP in the world. And target should be your internet gateway. Um, here it is. And internet gateway is this one. So this will make your uh, instances in the public internet accessible to the internet. Right? Click on save changes. Now we have to associate it with the subnet as well because we have just created the route and um, this route table is not yet attached to the subnet. So let's go over here, subnet association and hit added subnet association. Now we'll be selecting the two public facing subnets, which is public web AZ2 and public web AZ1, these two, and click on save association. Now we will be creating two more route tables, one for each app layer subnet in each availability zone. These route table will help you, will help your private instances access outside the VPC to the NAT gateway. Again, go to route tables, create route, private route table, AZ1 and then select the VPC and hit create route table. No, now we'll be going to edit routes and it already has a local route like before. So we'll add one more route with the destination to outside the world. 
and the target this time will be NAT gateway. Earlier we used internet gateway, but now we'll be using NAT gateway of AZ1. Right? So that is why we are creating separate route table for separate availability zones. Now hit create change, save changes. Similarly, now we go to subnet association and go to edit subnet. And we will be selecting the private subnet AZ1. This one over here and hit save association. Now, once that is done, the next part is our security groups because now we have to open certain ports so that we can access the traffic in and out of the instances. And on this side, if you scroll down to the security section, there is security groups. There'll be security groups if you have already created and there'll be a default security group as well. The first security group will create to allow public internet facing access to the load balancer. Right, so hit on create security group and give it a name. Let's call it internet facing LB security group. Hit give it a description. Let's say external load balancer security group. And then select the VPC. This is this was the default VPC, so we'll be using our custom VPC. And then add an inbound rule which should allow the HTTP access. Let's select HTTP here on port 80. And the source would be, let's say I'll open it for the word because uh, I want it to be publicly accessible. And then um, I'll open it for uh, IPv6 as well. Right? And hit create security group. Now I'm gonna create one more security group. Let's go back to security groups and create one more security group and let's call it web tier security group. Is a security group for your web tier and uh, use this VPC. Now the inbound rule of this would be uh, I should have access to it on port 80 if I want to test something and only our load balancers should have access to it, right? Let's uh, use the custom type as again HTTP and I'll use a security group. So enter SG and it should be the load balancer security group, which is uh, this one. And you can add one more rule to allow yourself uh, access to it. So let's use this and HTTP and source is my IP. Here, security group. Forgot to add the description, which is a mandatory field. So hit create. Now, the third security group will be for our internal load balancer. So let's go back to security group, create security group, and then give it a name internal LB security group. I'll use same as the description. And change the VPC again as my custom VPC. Now the inbound rule would be from our web tier security group. We want only our web servers are able to access this. So HTTP and so should be SG. And let's say here is your web tier security group. Select that. Okay, and hit save or create security group. Now the fourth security group that we'll be creating is for our private servers. Right? So create, give it a name, private instances security group, name as description, select the VPC. And then this time we'll be opening it for port 4000 and we'll see why we are using the port 4000. 4000, the source is our internal load balancer security group, this one. And we can open it for our IP as well. So port again, 4000. And my IP, scroll down, hit create security group. And there'll be a fifth security group, uh, which will provide us access to MySQL on port 3306. So 
security group create security groups give it a name call it db security group add the inbound rule and this time it will be mysql aurora and port is 3306 source type as custom and your source would be private instances security group this is and that's it hit create security group all right so now our security groups have been completed and Till now we have completed the prerequisite and the networking and the security part till here. So this one is completed. Now we'll be moving on to part two, which is a database deployment. So I'll move it away again. So to provision RDS instances in AWS, we have to provision something called database subnet groups. So let's go to Amazon RDS. Okay, there is this service and uh, go to subnet groups hit create database subnet group give it a name let's call it c tier db subnet group description then choose the vpc or custom vpc then use the subnets you can use multiple availability zones so we have used 1a 1b because uh, these two zones we have used Let's use this and select the subnet as well. So our subnet will be the private subnets. So let's uh, quickly verify the subnets that we have to use. I'm gonna open the new tab, go to VPC and subnets. Now for database servers, we have a private subnet DB1, this one. Let me just add the filter over here. So these two subnets, private DB subnet one and subnet two, and they were 10.0, 4.0, and 5.0. So if we go back, select subnet, this was 5.0 in US 1B and US 1A, it was 4.0. These two we have selected and hit create. Now we have created the subnet group. Now we'll be doing the database deployment. So go over here, it says databases and create database. Now select standard create. There are two options, select standard create and use Amazon Aurora on the first option. It then go down under the template, uh, choose dev test. Now give it a name, cluster is database one. Let's keep it default, uh, a master username. And then you can give it a master password as well. So let me do that. At least eight characters, I have used it. Now select, because you have selected this option, it will show you the instance class that you want to use. Let's keep it default. And then multi AZ deployment. So use this option, which says create an uh, Aurora replica or reader node in the different availability zones. Um, this will help you create the fast failover and high availability, right? This is what we have discussed. Now we have these two options. So you can select this because we have already created the security group and created this connection separately. So we don't need to use this. So let's select the VPC. So this is our VPC and this was our, this was, uh, was our subnet group that we have created. No public access, so keep it no. Now VPC uh, security group firewall, choose existing. And the existing firewall security group was DB security group, this one. And then I uh, will be using password authentication and performance inside, I don't need this. And that's it, hit create database.
Okay, now it says uh, there is one database instance and there is uh, the reader instance and the other availability zones. All right, so after waiting for like 20 minutes or so, uh, the instances are finally up and healthy. So you will see one uh, writer instance and one reader instance uh, in this database. So yeah, they both would be in a separate availability zones, which ensures again, high availability and fault tolerance. And uh, let's see what we have completed so far. So if we go back to our workshop over here, so we have completed the prerequisites, the networking and security setup and the database deployment. Now we'll be working on app tier instance deployment, load balancer auto scaling and web instance auto scaling and load balancer. So let's go back to our uh, AWS console. And the next part is app tier deployment. So first we will be going to instances. We will be creating an instance. So if you go over here and let's see the diagram that we were on. So we have created this, a VPC, we have created internet gateway, we have created uh, subnets. So these are done, all the private subnets, right? And we also created net gateways, not mentioned in the diagram, but we did that. We created the load balancers, we created the subnets over here like we created around five subnets for like each of these purpose like how do we connect from one instance to another and how do we connect to load balancers and so on so these uh these many things we have created already now we'll be working on creating these things like ec2 instances auto scaling groups we created the database and but we'll be deploying apps now so let's uh go to ec2 And then instances and hit uh, launch instances. You can give it a name. Let's say my web app, my web server one. And select the image. So I'll be using Amazon Linux image and go down and select the instance type. So we are good with T2 micro, which is the, which is eligible for free tier as well. Okay, so I'll be using this, uh, proceed without a key pair because we'll be using the EC2 instance login. Let's go and select the VPC network, click over here, edit, because currently it's using the default VPC, which is not what we want, we use this one. So this one would be the private uh, EC2 server. So we'll be using the private, uh, subnet let's use this one private subnet az1 and then we'll be using the security group as well so it was private instance security group this one click on advanced settings uh, we need to use the iam role that we have created in the beginning demo ec2 role as the prerequisite select this one as well and rest everything I'll keep at as default. So go there and hit launch instance. All right, so the EC2 instance is running now. So I'll select the instance and hit connect. I use session manager to do that. Connect. It will open a new tab with SSM. So you will be logging into the SSM user, which is a EC2 user. So I have copied the command and you can use this command to um, ask you to the EC2 user. And then you can try uh, pinging 8.8.8.8 so that uh, you know if it is going via the internet gateway or not. Yes, it does. It is getting the reply. So you should be able to ping the Google DNS server. And uh, now let's go ahead and configure the database in it. So let's try to install uh, MySQL client. First, I'll be downloading this package. 
using wget and it says permission denied if we are using sudo all right it's saved Okay, so after uh, some struggle, I have found the uh, correct commands to be used. So let me note it down and I'll add that in the description section as well. So this was the key that I have imported. And before that, I have um, used this package. So I have downloaded this package. So I've downloaded this package, then I did a sudo yum install on this package. Sorry, before that I did imported the key and then I installed. So these three commands I ran and which uh, helped me fix this issue. Okay, now I can run my SQL. It's good now. Now we'll be running uh, my SQL commands over here so this was the command so let's uh, change it to the rds endpoint let's go back to our rds server and go to this writer instance and you can and you can copy the endpoint details from here you see this one this is the endpoint replace it over here and then username change to your username our username was admin let's copy this command and go back to our terminal window hit insert enter the password that you have selected okay so we are in i'm able to log in successfully now run the command to create a sample database and database call it web app db okay this query okay now do a uh, show databases okay so we see our uh, web app db database created successfully now do a use web app db and we need to create a sample table so all the commands that i am uh, writing here it's there in the uh, workshop so feel free to take it from there okay so i have increased the font and let's run this command to create a sample table and let's do a uh, show tables now okay it says there is one table which which is called transactions and there is one row in that now insert some item into that using this query. We have inserted one row and let's do a select star to make sure that we have a row. So this was the row that we have inserted, amount, groceries and ID. So ID was auto generated. We have uh, amount and groceries as the value, amount and description. And uh, so that completes our configuring database part. Now let's go back to our uh, AWS instance, I'll open a new tab and uh, go to S3. So now uh, our S3 bucket will come handy now. So we have our bucket already over here and we'll upload the application code to it. So if we go to our GitHub repository, the code that we have downloaded, let's go back to that in the application code, there'll be a config file. It's this one dbconfig.js. Although this is not a best practice, this is just for the demo purpose we are doing. So just copy this and uh, add those details like your db host, username, password, and upload that file to your um, to your storage bucket. So let me do that securely. Right. So after making the changes, we can just uh, go back to our S3 bucket and upload the file.
now we'll also upload the folder to it the app tier folder over here so click over here add folder and select the folder that you have downloaded it was so we'll be uploading this folder we drag and drop over here right so all the files are there uh, and this uh, DB config file also came here along with it. So I'm going to delete it because we have already made the changes. So this is good. We have our file and files. Click upload. Right. So all these files are here. Now uh, go back to your SSM session and we need to install all the necessary component to run our backend application. Start with the node version manager. So let's go over here and I'll just exit the session and run this command. Okay. Let me source the bash profile again in case it was not sourced before. Okay, now next let me install nvm nvm install 16 and nvm u16 now we'll also install a pm2 process which is a daemon process manager that will keep your node.js app running all the time even if you exit the instance or even if it has rebooted so let's install pm2 Let's go to our CD and um, run the command to download the code uh, that we have just uploaded right for the app tier in the bucket. Just take the bucket name from here. And the command that I'm going to run is AWS S3 copy. S3 colon and the bucket name. Then app tier because we want to download the entire folder. App here hyphen hyphen recursive and let's do a ls over here and it downloaded the entire folder now go inside this folder let's run pm2 start index.js and then pm2 list so i made a typo pm2 list Okay, it says status is online. Let's do a PM2 logs to verify we are good. There's app listening on the back end, localhost 4000. So this is done till here. We want to make sure that even if the server is interrupted, uh, this app is still unaffected. For that, we need to run PM2 startup. After running it, you will see a message similar to this. Okay, so um, the command that is there in your screen, you need to run that command. Once that is done, you have to run pm to save to save the configuration. That's it. Once you have done that, um, you are good to uh, perform the health checks, like if it is working fine or not. So do a curl on the localhost and port 4000. Let's see. So this is what it is returning. This is health checks. So our app is running fine on port 4000. And you can check the database connection as well by hitting this URL. Okay, so this is our results ID, port 4000, description, whatever we have added it. So your app layer is now fully configured and ready to go. Now we will be creating the load balancers and auto scaling groups as part of our part four. Okay, so now we are at part four. We have completed up to here. In this part, we'll be creating an app tier AMI, target group, internal load balancer, a launch template, and an auto scaling group. And the same we'll be doing for web tier as well along with external load balancer and auto scaling and that would complete our, our project for this video right so i'll just move this away like we've done before and then i'll go to my ec2 server search the ec2 
So the instance that we have created for app tier, uh, this one, my web server, actually this should be app server. So let's call it app server. So we'll be creating a machine image from this. So I'll select this and then go to actions, image and template, and then create image. Then give this image a name. App tier image and then description, call it app tier. And we can keep rest of the things as default and hit create image. Now, over here, we'll be going to target groups uh, inside the load balancing section and hit create target group. Then, uh, target group type is instances, so the default one, and then give this a name app tier target group on http port would be 4000 and the vpc will be our custom vpc and then health check would be on the path health and health check protocol is http that's okay and if you want, you can change these settings for healthy threshold, unhealthy threshold. Let's use the value as two. And uh, review everything and then hit next. Create target group. Now that target group is created, we'll be creating a load balancer. So again, from the left side, load balancers. Hit create load balancer. And we'll be creating an application load balancer. The first option, give this a name, call it app tier LB, internal LB. And this would be internal. So make sure you select the internal one. This is not the public facing. And select the VPC. Then select the subnet as a private subnet. So US East one, private subnet AZ one, that's okay. US East one B, private subnet AZ two one. And then select the security group, uh, delete this one and select internal LB security group. Then HTTP port 80 and select a target group. So we'll be redirecting our traffic that is coming to load balancer to these uh, app tier target group. In the back end, there'll be instances on this group. So select this, hit create load balancer. Okay, it is provisioning. So meanwhile, we'll be creating launch template. So let's hit over here and give this a name app tier launch template and go down and choose my amis because we already have a custom ami and this one app tier image now go down select instance type choose uh, t2 micro and use this default one that is okay and then go to security groups and select the private instance security group private instances security group and then uh, ebs volume let's see um the default one is fine by us let's uh, proceed further in advanced detail Expand this and choose the IAM instance profile. Demo easy to roll. This is the one that we have created. And basically that's it. Then once that is done, you review everything till the end and hit create launch template. Now we'll be creating auto scaling group using this launch template. So let's go back to our EC2 section and go to Auto scaling at the very end, auto scaling groups. Now hit create auto scaling group. Give it a name. 
app tier ASG. Select a launch template that we have created, app tier launch template. Version is, uh, we only have one, one version for now. So let's keep it default. Then go next. Select the VPC, our custom VPC. Select the availability zone. Make sure it is private AZ1 and private AZ2. Two availability zones. So private subnet AZ1. And then private subnet AZ2, these two. Hit next. And then um, load balancing would be attached to an existing load balancer. We already have a load balancer created for this. And select the target group as app tier target group. Okay, let's keep it default and go down, hit next. Now the desired capacity, minimum capacity, let's keep everything too. So that there'll be always two instances running as part of this auto scaling group, uh, which ensures high availability and fault tolerance. So let's use that and rest everything default and then hit next. And next. Add tags if you want, or else add next and review everything and then create auto scaling group. Now, once this is created, there'll be two instances running over here. And then uh, those instances will be registered as a target to the auto scaling group using the target groups. So what we have done uh, in this part, let's quickly have a look. In the beginning, we created an EC2 server, right? And did all the customization in that. Um, like we have done some configurations and all other things uh, inside this EC2 server. And then we created a custom AMI using that. Then we created a target group. This target group will be serving as an backend to the load balancer. And as part of this target group, we have created a load balancer, an internal load balancer. And then we created launch template. This launch template will be using this AMI that we have created. And then we have created a auto scaling group using the launch template. Now this auto scaling group will be having two servers, two EC2 servers running. Let's call it EC2 1 and EC2 2. And these will be registered as a backend to the load balancer. So whenever there is a incoming request to this load balancer, it will be going to this and to this server. Right? So this is what we have done as part of part four. Now let's see if our services are up and running. So let's hit refresh. It says two instances are there. Let's go back instances and we see two more instances that have been created. So now let's go back to our workshop and this time we'll be doing part five, which is web tier instance deployment. And this will be updating Nginx configuration, creating the web server and then creating the software stack. So first step is open up the application code and nginx.con from the repo that we have downloaded in this. Let's clear the screen. Alas, there is this nginx conf. So open this and go to the very end where there is a load balancer configuration. Right over here. Over here it says replace with internal load balancer DNS. So I'll just uh, copy it. Let's go back to our load balancers. And this is our DNS name for load balancer. I'll copy it. Go back. And then uh, shift A to go at the... Oh. 
and then I'll replace uh, this part over here. I'll replace over here. So this along with this will be uploading it to the S3 bucket. So let me just open the S3 bucket. Demo web app and over here. So I'll just uh, drag and drop as these many files upload. Okay, upload is successful. So let's close this. We'll see a web tier folder and nginx.com. These two uh, files and folders we have just copied. So let's go ahead and do a web instance deployment so now we will be creating uh, the web instances so i'll just go back to ec2 and create the web server okay hit on launch instance all right so let's call it um, demo web server okay use the same image and t2 micro proceed without a key pair the same thing and then use the existing security group the security group that we had created for the web app first uh, i will be updating the vpc so click edit and then choose the custom vpc now uh, this will be in our public subnet so public web subnet az1 use that and auto assign public ip because this will be accessible publicly so it should have a public ip and then we'll also be creating im role but let's select the security group first so security group would be our web tier security group now go to advanced details and I am instance profile. So this would be demo EC2 role like this. And that's it. Hit launch instance. Now the instance is uh, provisioned. Let's see if it is running or not. Still pending. Let's wait for a few more seconds. Okay, it is up. Let's click over here and connect using the same session manager. Okay, it's still. Uh, provisioning it so wait for a few seconds okay now we can connect okay we are in the server zoom it a little bit sudo su ec2 user and then try to ping a public internet yes we are getting reply so we are good and now we will be configuring it so Again, the same thing, NVM install and a uh, few other steps that we'll be doing. So let's copy the commands given in our uh, workshop. Copy it. We paste the curl command. That's done. Now I'll be doing a source on bash rc. This is done now. NVM install. PM use sixteen. Okay. Now we need to download our web tier code from S three bucket. So let's go to our home directory and do AWS three copy. Then S three colon and the name of the bucket which is over here demo web app one 
and then the folder name was web here here then hyphen hyphen recursive okay it's downloaded let's go inside this folder web tier and then run npm install okay so now we'll be running npm build command is npm run build Okay, it says it has created the build. We can install Nginx. Okay, so I was able to install Nginx using the simple command sudo yum install Nginx. Right, so it's been installed and and now we have to go to cd etc Nginx directory. And there'll be a con file already, but we'll be replacing this con file with the one that we have updated. So let me take a backup of this. Right, so I'll just now let me copy that file sudo AWS or I had this command already which we ran this one and I just have to it was not con is dot so that will be downloaded uh, in this current directory and tonight I'll use sudo again download it now let me restart the service sudo service nginx start failed so let me open this nginx conf go to the file where we made the changes go to the line where we made the changes this could be because of the square brackets that i forgot to move let me do that now let's do the restart again okay now it didn't throw any error so let's check the status sudo service engine status and it says it is running there are no issues with that okay now uh, make sure that nginx has permission to access our files so execute this command to enable the service uh, to be started on reboot uh, we can do we can run this command okay this will have created a symbolic link as well now when you plug in the public ip of your web server you should see your website so let me go to the instance and this was our instance and let's open the public ipv4 address So let me connect the webs. Okay, so this was our web server, and let's try to do a curl on localhost. The port eighty. It is returning the JavaScript page. Uh, Maybe because I did not enable it for my IP. Let's um, go and check the security group of demo web server. Security. So this open for from the load balancer as well as from my IP, unless my IP has changed. Anyways, we'll be uh, we'll be checking this from load balancer. So let's let's proceed further to the final to the last and final step. So let's go to the instance that we have created. This one. So let's select our web server instance and create an image out of it. And just do a right click image, create image. Web server 
web server image. Okay, keep everything as default. And hit create image. Once the image is created, again we'll be creating the target group. So on the left side, load balancing section and then target group, create target group instances. A target group name is web server target group and then what would be ad and vpc is our custom vpc health check would be on slash health and then create it next review everything and create target group now we'll be creating our public facing load balancer so hit load balancer create load balancer in application load balancer and then name it as web tier external lb this is internet facing choose the vpc and us east 1a it will be in our public subnets so public web subnet az1 and then for the other zone it will be public web subnet az2 and then go down and select the security group for public load balancer so this is internet facing lb security group okay and then go down listener and routing so it will be listening on port 80 and the traffic will be forwarded to the web server target group and review everything create load balancer now we'll create the launch template Click over here, create launch template and give it a name web server launch template. Go down, choose my AMIs, and it would be web server. So, this one web server image instance type will be T2 micro, that's what we have selected. and no key pair so that's all right security group would be web server security group so this one web tier security group and then go down to the advanced details and change the im instance profile to demo ec2 role and basically that's it create launch template now the last part auto scaling group so go back over here hit auto scaling group create auto scaling group give it a name web server asg use a launch template web server launch template default version is one then hit next vpc is our custom vpc availability zone would be this is because public subnet so so it will be public subnet az1 public web subnet az1 and public web subnet az2 hit next and then attach to an existing load balancer we already have a load balancer select the load balancer web server target group and then again specify Hit next again specify the capacity as two minimum two desired and two maximum and that's it hit next 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 and then hit create auto scaling group now we'll wait for a couple of seconds till these two web servers are up and running and then we'll hit the load balancer url so let's copy the load balancer url so we have uh, this dns for the web tier external load balancer i'll copy this let's paste it over here okay it's still uh, spinning up on the web server okay it is up now so finally we have completed all the steps so this is our uh, website right if you click over here it will show you db demo as well so you can add the records let's say amount 244 
then test demo and hit add it added the record to the database and it is fetching it from there and this is what uh, we wanted to see right now make sure that you delete everything once you have completed the demo else these uh, rds and all the web services everything will gonna charge you a lot of money that's it for this video guys i hope this video was somewhat valuable to you and helpful in understanding the concept of challenge 2 and how to build a highly available highly scalable and fault tolerant architecture in aws if you think the video was helpful please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing the channel if you are new here i will see you soon with the next video thank you so much for watching